Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kenny Wallace Show brought to you by Jags. Where's that Jags car? The leader in high performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to jags.com for everything and anything you need to fix your vehicles up. Well, it's Sunday night and I just got back from Texas Motor Speedway. Still wearing my dress shirt. Don't have my race shirt on. But I thought we would break down a little bit of this Texas race. And here's why. It had it all. Let's start with Jimmy Johnson, our seven-time champion. What's Jimmy doing? Can he pull this off? Jimmy Johnson on, I think, Saturday, he said, uh, man, these cars really drive different. I'm used to driving these cars off the right rear. In other words, Jimmy's used to being a little bit of a dirt racer. He said he's used to going down in the corner. He's used to feeling the right rear do all the work. And he got away with that. And he won seven championships. And he's one of our greatest NASCAR drivers of all time. So he takes the break. He goes and runs Indy cars. He kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, MJ, right? Michael Jordan. You know, remember when Michael Jordan took that little break? He, I'm done playing basketball. And he went and played a little bit of baseball. And he'd come back. But listen, I'm never going to say never to Jimmy Johnson because he's a seven-time champion. Jimmy Johnson can do whatever he wants to do. But this looks like this is going to be a long road to hoe, so to speak. Uh, he spins out on Saturday. He gets away with it. He does a press conference in the media center, and that's when he said, look, I'm used to driving the old cars off the right rear. And he said, uh, these cars, you got to drive on the right front, meaning don't test it. Listen, we saw all the spin outs. What was there, eight, 10 spin outs today? Uh, a lot of them, you know, on the outside going for the lead, but there was a lot of people spinning out. So Jimmy Johnson spins out on Saturday in practice. And he says, I got no practice. This is really hard on me. If I'm going to do this, I need a little bit of practice. There's not much NASCAR practice right now. Listen, we can line the excuses up. It's not excuses, but I'll go with Kenny Schrader. Schrader says, listen, it's not how you run. It's how you place the blame. <laughs> That's a good one from Schrader. So I agree with Jimmy, though. This is a tough one for him. He leaves NASCAR, he comes back, and it's a whole new car. He gets no practice, even though he's a seven-time champion. And as of right now, Jimmy just can't get the feel of the car. But around, around 147 laps of 270, whatever it was, he started getting there. And then he got involved in another mission. So, all right, Jimmy Johnson spins out on Saturday, spins out on Sunday, ends up getting in a wreck, and Jimmy's just done. So I uh, feel bad for him, but uh, thought we'd wrap up the Jimmy Johnson. Uh, it seems like a little test. Jimmy's working with Legacy. He's doing a good job. He is doing a little bit of work on the team, and he is a leader, I think, over there. I talked to Eric Jones, and he says, man, listen, I'll listen to anything Jimmy Johnson has to say. All right, we're at three minutes and 30 seconds for Earnhardt, so let's move on real quick. Um, all the spin outs, right? Crazy. I mean, that's how, listen, there was nobody's fault. It, you, you can't go, you can't go, oh, it's the car's fault. Oh, it's the racetrack's fault. No, this was a very difficult racetrack. You cannot go back and go, let's change the rules. Let's put grip down. Let's build a new car. No, everybody had equal chance. This was a very difficult racetrack. I got to be honest, hell of a race, hell of a show. It's like, oh, I mean, my butt was puckered up the whole damn race. Oh, there he go. I mean, you could tell that Denny Hamlin, when he was going for the win, it was basically a green-white checker, right? We tried it three times, green-white checker. And you could tell uh, Denny Hamlin, he, Denny Hamlin, he was pedaling on the outside, trying to get by Chase Elliott. Old car just come around on him. So, uh, yeah, so the race was just full of spin outs, Galore, a uh, very difficult racetrack. Once again, I don't think it was anybody's fault. I think everybody was loose and had nothing to do with the racetrack. Same racetrack, been around for years. So can't blame anybody. That's just the way it was. Difficult racetrack, uh, good race. All right, <laughs> I, this is my new one. Let's get to the good part. 
Finally, Chase Elliott. Wow, he does it. Uh, listen, when we, when we talked to Ben Kennedy on Kenny Conversation, we said, you know, what was the downfall of NASCAR? Well, Ben, ben talked a lot about it. He had good reasons, you know. Uh, but he said, listen, we see a distinct drop in viewership when Chase Elliott doesn't do good. And when Chase Elliott wins, we see a distinct uptick in NASCAR. And, and here's what I said. And, and I'm just going to repeat myself because not everybody watches everything. Chase Elliott is the last of the bloodline of the greats. Because a lot of you straighten me out. You said, well, what about Ryan Blaney? I'm like, look, I love Ryan Blaney. I love his dad, Dave Blaney. But I'm talking about the greats. Okay, we had like, you know, Dale Earnhardt Sr., seven-time champion. His son, Dale Jr., you know, uh, Daryl Waltrip, Michael Waltrip, you know, all that stuff, all that, you know, Richard Petty, Kyle Petty. What I'm saying, and respond right here, what I'm saying right now is Shea Elliott is the very last driver of the bloodline, of the greats that, that's competing. Now, you can try to get me here and there, maybe Jeffrey Earnhardt or this or that, but just for the sake of arguing, go ahead and tell me right now, but this is the last of the bloodline. Chase Elliott's dad, the great Bill Elliott, was a champion, won it all, the first guy to win the Winston Million at Darlington. And so when Chase Elliott wins, the people around 40 to 60 years old, they love it. I love it. I think it's great. It, listen, if it takes Chase Elliott to win, to make everybody happy, I'm all in. So big win by Chase Elliott. And here's what was big about it comes back after that skiing accident. Remember, Chase Elliott breaks his leg, and we're all like, well, you know, he's just not himself. He's still recovering. I said that. Well, looks like he's back now. Uh, showed up at Martinsville, ran real good. So I would say last, what, four races? Respond right here. I say the last four races, Chase Elliott's back. You heard it, everybody, bar talk, in the bar. Chase Elliott running good now. <laughs> Now you're really running good. Run the siren down there in Dawsonville at the pool hall. So Chase Elliott's back. He wins. He's looking good. Great interview. Great interview. Felt he looked humbled. Looks like he'd just been in a fight. Broke the leg. He hears the whispers. And I really liked. He said, listen, I got Hooters on the car. I want to pay tribute to Alan Quickie. To finally get Hooters in the Cup Series in Victor Lane. This is for Alan Quickie, his family, the whole deal. Very sincere. I, I, I had goosebumps. I felt it. So good job, Chase, on the interview. And, and I think everybody, all eyes are on you. And I, I think what I saw, now this is me. You respond right here. What I saw in that, that post-race interview was a man that has been through a lot after being, you know, Chase is one of the NASCAR Cup champion. This guy's good. He's won it all. He's done it all. He's won in the short track ranks. He's won it all. And, and that's why he's where he's at right now. Uh, he's a great road course racer. But I see a guy that won it all, went through some tough times. What has it been? 41, 42 races since his last win. That's over a year. Well, listen, if you run every race in NASCAR, it's 39 races. So it's been well over a year. So, congratulations. Hey, Herman, quit saying so. So, so. <laughs> I, can hear, I can hear my journalism, my, my teacher. Quit saying so. Okay, so. All right. Let's end it like this. Uh, let the Hermanator end with a D bullshitter. The second place deal, that was not William Byron's fault. I, I, know, Ch I know Ross Chastain is upset, but we could clearly see Ross... He was, he was running high, and I think, he, you know, what it looked like, he got high, 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 and he's like, oh, and he starts letting out of the gas, and William Byron does not wreck people, and he just ran, he packed him right in the ass. Yes, he did. Spun him out. All hell breaks loose. So, listen, we are late on Sunday night, but I would like, I agree with, I agree with Brad Keselowski. When did that caution come out? Because, when they were wrecking, Brad was underneath William Byron. 
Brad Keselowski thinks he finished second. Will they overturn it? TV was done. They, they stayed a long time. TV stayed a long time, but we don't we don't have speed TV anymore. So, uh, you know, let's see. Are, is Brad Keselowski right? He said, I think I finished second. He didn't say, I think I finished second, but he's like, eh. Because they congratulate him on third place. He goes, oh, I got to ask NASCAR about that. So, told you my opinion on everything. Ten minutes. I couldn't go any faster. I didn't repeat myself. I'm proud of myself. Oh, Herman, what are you doing? I'm breaking my back. Breaking my arm, patting myself on the back. That was balls of the wall right there, everybody. All right. Remember, uh, please like and subscribe right here. What? Kim says we get in the hot tub right now. All right, everybody. By the way, that right there, remember when coronavirus happened and you couldn't go to the baseball games and they were making those stand-ups? That thing is certified by Major League Baseball. Yes, sir. -y. On the back of that, uh, it, hell, I don't care. Let's do it. Uh, take it down right here. That may be certified. Yes, sir. -y. Uh there it is. Check it out. Huh? Ain't that incredible? Certified. Pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Well, listen, uh, that's the Kenny Walls show. That's where I give my opinion. And, yep, we're using the ring light. That's I ran the chili bowl. Didn't do very good, but that was fun. So, we got lots of, got some stuff up here. Maybe one day I'll break it all down. That'll be another show. All right, everybody. Uh, Man, we got a lot of Kenny conversations going on, and they're going to keep on rolling. This Tuesday, six-time pro stock champ in NHRA, the great Erica Enders, this Tuesday. All right, see you next time. Remember to like and subscribe.